Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny. Now remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information I have in the description box in the comment section. Um, also, um, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And also, when you go to notifications, make sure you click all so you get all notifications that come out for KRS TV. Um, also, check out my YouTube partner, BK World Tube, which is the Black Netflix, where you get everything from love and hip hop all the way to the haves and the have not. So, check out that link in my description box in the comment section and check out BK World Tube today. Now, this is another mukbang that I'm doing for y'all on today. And um, what I have here is a spinach salad that I've made. Um, I have uh, cucumbers, um, habanero peppers, mozzarella cheese, and. Um, um, Chipotle ranch dressing and I'm definitely a big fan of spinach I love spinach so um, I'm doing a little something healthy for you for you guys today but uh, it's been a really interesting week <laughs> let me tell y'all it's been a real interesting week now first thing I'm gonna talk about is the presidential debates I and my 37 years of being on this earth have never seen a presidential debate as crazy as as that between Trump and Biden. I mean, it was all over the place. It was unmanaged. You know, uh, you can tell that Chris Wallace was literally being overwhelmed by Trump's antics. <laughs> and <clears throat> I've even shared this with a few people that I know that um, y'all remember Gwen Ifill? You know who um, she used to do the vice president vi vice presidential debates. She passed away in 2016. Now, if Gre now if Gwen Enfield was doing that debate, she would have shut she would have shut Trump's mic off. She ain't play. And I'm saying they needed someone of that caliber to run that debate because Chris Wallace was literally being completely overwhelmed, and Trump was just doing doing the most and Chris Chris Wallace you know you, you kind of got the impression that he was pandering to Trump which was crazy I mean he even got to the point where Biden literally told Trump to shut up like <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like that it was crazy and then when it got to the point where um where Biden tried to get Trump to denounce white supremacy that's what got me cuz I'm like um Biden um that's pretty much his his major base. He's not going to do that. And he's a white man with privilege. He's not going to denounce white supremacy because that will be the end of him if he did. Now, my whole thing is that he's a white supremacist. Okay, I can accept that. I'd rather you be real with it than lie about it. I mean, that's one thing I can say. I may not be, uh, I may not be um, let's say, a fan of Trump. I mean, I was a fan of him when he was on Celebrity Apprentice, but not a fan as being Commander-in-Chief. I am not a fan of that. I didn't vote for that. <laughs> but, um, I can honestly say, you know, I, I respect the, I respect the man's honesty when it comes down to how the way he really sees himself and how the way he sees America. And it's crazy because, uh, there are a lot of white people who think the same way as he does. You know, he's not the only one. Um, but what really added hot sauce to this, to the situation was that Friday it was announced that him and his wife, Milana had been affected with COVID-19 and that currently right now he's in Walter Reed, but I think he's supposed to be let out tomorrow. Now, some people think that it's a, it's a hoax that he's really, he really doesn't have COVID and it's kind of convenient he would get COVID during the during the election campaign but then again for me it's not that far-fetched I mean let's let's be real he's been walking around without a mask he has not been taking this whole COVID situation very seriously and 
it's, it's, it's just insane. You know, like, you know, this is a global pandemic. You know, so this is not just a problem here in the U.S. This is a problem around the entire world. And I have to admit, Trump has been very negligent when it comes down to COVID. I mean, he's literally been disregarding, you know, the health professionals, you know, the scientists, and just been saying outlandish shit like, you know, drink bleach and all that shit. And now you now you get wind of it. It's, it's a possibility that it, it could be true. I mean, if you're not protecting yourself and not doing what you're supposed to do, um, yeah, you can expose yourself to it. And it's really based on your immune system as to how you will overcome it. But he's at Walter Reed, so that's that's pretty much a military hospital, so he's getting very good care there. But at the end of the day, Trump, um, you know, let's be real. Like, this is a global pandemic, and this is not something that you can play around with and personally my sympathy doesn't go to Trump it goes to the over the millions of people who have died due to COVID the people who have lost their jobs um, the people who are currently now struggling trying to find work because they've lost their position due to COVID people who have lost their businesses I mean this has been a, a whirlwind for the American people but for the world at large and so many lives we've lost due to COVID. So this is not something that we can take lying down or take as as something that or, or take as a laughing matter per se. Like this is really serious and you know, definitely follow all of the information you're getting from the health professionals and the scientists because we gotta beat this thing and we gotta live through it. And the only way we're gonna live through it is if we abide you know, by the laws of, of the land and also um, following the advice from health professionals and as well as the scientists, you know, they're trying to come up with a vaccine for it. But I, I just recommend that definitely, you know, eating healthy and, you know, trying to maintain your health and, you know, stay in quarantine and, you know, only leave when you necessarily have to be out there, you know, my my love and respect goes out to all the essential workers who are putting their lives on the line you know to see to it that our daily functions are possible so that's where my sympathy goes to it doesn't go to Trump it don't go to Trump because Trump has been very negligent in this whole COVID situation and that's where I stand on that now And also let you know I like I like peppers in my salad. You know, I like a little spice to my salad, so that's just pretty much how I do it. Now with this whole situation um, you know, boiling over and then, you know, we got the elections next month. Um it's crazy because, you know, I think this this election is probably going to be the most, I would say, the most tense election in American history. And I just think that people who are for Trump are going to vote for Trump. And people who are for Biden are going to vote for Biden. I don't think either side is going to swing one person from one extreme to the other. Because both of them have their fan base. And... We definitely know that Trump has a very big fan base. I mean, let's just be real. That debate, let's just be real. Trump gave Trump gave us great TV. He always gave us great TV, especially when he was on Celebrity when he was on The Apprentice and The Celebrity Apprentice. Um, he knows how to give good TV, and he know and and if anything, he's a he's definitely a president that's very knowledgeable about social media. So he knows if he does some crazy shit, he's gonna trend. I mean, he's always on Twitter. So, you know, you got the populace, and then you also have the former vice president who's now building his, his campaign. Um, and he's pretty much building his base. So, really, when it comes down to this election, it could go either way. And we'll just know 
after the elections who whether Trump will stay in office or whether Joe Biden would be the next president of the United States. But yeah, it's it's insane. You know, and this is probably probably one of the most insane elections that that we will ever experience. I mean, because we're doing it in the middle of a global pandemic, um, and then even adding more to it, you know, Trump just been diagnosed with COVID and he's at Walter Reed. So in due time, we'll see how that's going to play out. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this thing is this whole situation that has been trending on social media for quite some time, and I'm talking about none other than Jaguar Wright. Um, I'm a huge fan. I definitely loved her interview she did with Storm Room Row. I mean, because she revealed a lot in that interview, far more with him than she did the previous, you know, podcast that she's been on. But let's just say she's now getting responses. And the first response came from our boy and one of the greatest voices of all time, Mr. Tevin Campbell. Now, she was on another podcast where she was saying that um, how crazy the industry is. And she talks about Tevin Campbell because she says that he's actually friends with a with a with a friend of hers and that the two of them aren't friends but they know each other and she said that how is it that a guy with a gift like his ends up prostituting himself on Hollywood Boulevard you know how does that happen with a guy with a gift like his i mean because let's be real Tevin Campbell is i would have to say is one of the most underrated american american male voices of all time I mean, this man right now can sing some of these R&B artists out the room. End of story. I mean, Tevin is that vocal beast. And I have to even say he's one of my inspirations because I'm a singer too. And I definitely, I definitely look to him because he's one of the greatest voices that ever, that ever lived. And still is. He still is one of the greatest voices that ever lived. It's just that, you know, the industry's messy. But... Tevin Campbell goes to Twitter and let it be known that what you're doing, sweetheart, is defamation. I got lawyers on deck, so if you were wise, you would take that video down. Well, I'm going to let you know, Tevin, um, that's not going to happen because that podcast posted that video. So it wasn't a video that she posted herself. It was a video that they posted. And in the world of social media, since, you know, that's my world as well, they're not going to take nothing down. Once it's out there, it's out there. Now, as far as you suing her for defamation, um, that's going to open up a whole lot on, you know, that's going to open up a lot, you know, not just for her, but also for you. So if you want to pursue this, you can do that because, um, you know, if you don't like what she's saying and if what she's saying is true, you're going to have to prove it. So that means they're going to they're gonna have to go through everything. So things that you probably don't want out there, Tevin, they're going to put out there. Um, but also when I um, mentioned that, that, yeah, you're, you're, you're saying that, you know, about, a, you're, you're saying that she's wrong for saying that you, that you've never prostituted yourself. But Professor Griff said the same thing a few years ago. So if you're going to come after Jaguar, you need to come after Professor Griff as well. Because Jaguar wasn't the first person who said that about you. And, you know, we all know about him being arrested in 99, you know, for um, soliciting an undercover officer. Kind of the George Michael thing. But personally, I think he was set up. You know, and I think it was a low point in his life. And, you know, a lot of times when you're a celebrity and you reach that low point, you can easily be exploited. And I think that's what happened to Tevin. But, <clears throat> you know, Tevin has been one person that has come out... Um, Saying that what Jaguar is saying is 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 that, that what Jaguar is saying is not true, and I'm just thinking that maybe the verbiage that she used, you know, painted a different picture. But at the end of the day, she said what she said. <laughs> but um, 
I'm waiting to hear what Jaguar has to say in regards to that. Um, but then another person came out against her, and the person that I'm talking about next is Talib Kweli. He literally had this orchestrated response to her, and he did admit that the two of them did have an affair while she was still married, but she also admitted that. You know, she admitted she was wild. <laughs> you know, she, she pretty much put all her stuff out there, you know, so if she tells somebody else's shit, you, you, they can't come back at her because she's already said it. And if anything, it was like Talib's, you know, whole response to me was like very orchestrated. You know, saying that, oh, if you agree with her, you're a culture vulture. How is that possible, man? I mean, if anything, it's out there. And we bloggers and people who have our, you know, have our podcast and all of our different, you know, social platforms, we're going to talk about what's good, you know, you know, the T. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that you would say that is like you're trying to. You're trying to, uh, I would say, I would say, um, trying to divert the situation to make you look like the victim. And I'm sorry, it didn't work. Because personally, as I said before, I don't think Jaguar is lying. But I am really stressing that, you know, that Jaguar be careful because, you know, these people are coming and they can come in the worst way. And I would hate for something to happen to her. But, I, I do salute her that she's not afraid to come out and speak the truth, you know, and is willing to put herself on the line because she said her mission is to destroy, you know, the the demonic forces of the industry because they have prevailed for far too long. And she even gave some more tea. I didn't mention this on my last episode, but she gave some tea about Diddy. And what she shared was that she had a friend who was an entertainment lawyer who worked for Diddy, um, who worked for Bad Boy, and she needed some approval on some documents, and she goes into the office to see Diddy getting fellatio from Christopher Williams. You know, um, I'm dreaming Christopher Williams. (coughs) Promises, promises, Christopher Williams. Now that was definitely some sure tea. And then... The lady says that the next day, Diddy confronts her about it, and she asks, like, why wouldn't you just lock the door if you're going to be doing that? And he says, I'll do whatever the fuck I want in my building, and if I can make a man suck my dick, that means I can make him do anything for money. (coughs) Now, with that response, and knowing how Diddy moves... I mean, y'all see the making a band when he made them walk all the way from Manhattan to Brooklyn for some cheesecake... And that they had to walk all the way back to Brooklyn, all the way back to Manhattan to give it to him. That's the mentality of somebody that will pull something like that or who thinks in that fashion. Now, I have to say allegedly because I wasn't there. But <clears throat> but from, from what is being reported, I wouldn't put it past him. Now, Christopher Williams, on the other hand, I don't look at Christopher Williams any different. Than any other artist. Because to tell you the truth. A lot of your favorite artists. Went through that route. To get to where they are. But personally. I think. If this were, if this is true. I think it's because. He was at a very low point. In his career. Like in the early 2000s. He definitely was. Because. After that whole. If you watched his unsung. After he did what he did at Uptown. That pretty much kind of. Ruined his reputation. Throughout the industry. You know. He was somewhat blackballed. I mean, he did end up getting on Giant Records, but then after a while, they, you know, dropped him. And he was probably looking for a label, you know, so he can get back to doing what he does. And far as I, far as I heard alleged that, you know, they, they, he had a demo deal with Bad Boy, but he didn't actually get an actual deal with them. You know, nothing, nothing transpired from, from that situation. But it doesn't make me look at Christopher Williams any differently. You know, and I'm saying when people are down and out, you know, people will do anything, you know. And I think he, it, it was at a low point. And it's, it's unfortunate because a lot of people, you know, can be put in that situation, you know. Because, you know, when you get used to the glitz and the glam and you no longer have that, 
it's it's literally like a gamble. You know, you want to, you want to do what you got to do to make it. But um, it doesn't make me look at Christopher Williams any differently. You know, I'm not gonna go in here and say, oh, he's gay, he's this, he's that. I mean, to tell you the truth, as I said before, I've said this, you know, before that I think most people are fluid. Most people can go either way depending on the situation or depending on who they're attracted to. And it is what it is. But I don't think she's doing this, in my opinion, to just, you know, I mean, yeah, it's scandalous and it's entertaining. But I think her mission is to expose how corrupt this music industry is. You know, because even me being a singer, you know, and me wanting to get into the industry at one point in time. <clears throat> You know, I, I I was like, yeah, I wanted to be I wanted to be famous and I wanted to be successful. But then I also was looking at all of these different documentaries and looking at some of the blogs that people had did about the music industry and it made me look at the industry in a different way. And it's 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 real, you know, that um a lot a lot goes on in this industry that a lot of people don't know about and a whole lot of people, you know, if you watch Unsung, a whole lot of people got ripped off, you know, you know, in, in these 360 deals or, you know, these slave deals that they give to new artists. And it's unfortunate. So the industry definitely needs to change because, you know, the power should be with the artists because without the artists, the industry wouldn't exist. Mm. And another artist that has come out about this is um, Jill Scott. Jill Scott has responded. She did this post on Twitter where she said that, you know, the lion doesn't, you know, it's, it's not disturbed by the barking of dogs. And then she tagged Mary J. Blige, Alicia Keys, um... Diddy and a few other people, you know, she tagged all the people that Jaguar talked about. So it was low key shade. But I'm like, Jill, if what she's saying is not true, why don't you call her out on it? Why don't you tell her tell exactly what's really what's really good? Which makes me think there probably is some truth to what Jaguar is saying. But now people are kind of you know like because you had Tevin Campbell come out, you had Talib Kweli come out, and You've also now got Jill Scott, who just recently came out today, you know, with that post. And it's got everybody thinking, okay, is there some truth to this, Jill? Quarren and Mines would like to know. <clears throat> I mean, because maybe, I mean, because personally, I think that, that, that the whole post was just a diss to her. But it wasn't telling that what Jaguar said was wrong. And you have to admit, the industry, they're all in this, so they're all going to protect each other. So that's a given. But then, Jaguar has also... <coughs> she also um, has now come out about Jennifer Lopez. And she's telling Jennifer Lopez, why don't you come out and speak? You know, what are you hiding in regards to Diddy? Because y'all remember that infamous um, shooting at Club New York... Where um, there was a girl who got shot in the face. Um, Shine, who was Diddy's, who was Diddy's artist at the time, ended up getting years, you know, for for assault. And Diddy walked away scot free. And J Lo ended up, you know, moving on, leaving Diddy, because her and Diddy were an item for a minute. And after that whole situation. And after J Lo got arrested along with Diddy and and um and Shine, once she got out of jail, you know she got with her people and completely distanced herself from Diddy and hasn't said nothing about it since. Um, so Jaguar is challenging J Lo like, um, what are you hiding? You know, why don't you speak up? 
I mean, Shine did years because of this, and you're not saying anything. Why don't you tell what really happened? You know, you know, you know, share how, you know, Diddy ruined your life, and maybe he got something on you. And that's the reason why you're quiet. I mean, alleged, alleged by what um, Jaguar is saying. Because I just saw the video not too long ago. So I'm like, wow, this is interesting. She is coming for more and more people. And I am dying to see what's going to happen next. I mean, because <clears throat> the reason why I'm really um, infatuated with this is because this is stuff that we've been hearing for a long time about how corrupt the industry is. And it's not just the music industry, it's all industries in America. This is an American issue. It's an American pandemic in its own right. Where <clears throat> a lot of people are forced to do very demeaning things to have jobs or positions, you know. And, and it's insane. You know, it's not even based on hard work and merit. A lot of times it's based on who you're screwing. Or who gives you the pass. And, you know, it goes to show that how is it that some great artists are shelved while some artists who are not as talented are pushed to the forefront and the machine is there to back them up. So what she's what she's really exposing is corruption in, in the industry, period, not just music. But what's going on in music is going on in corporate America. It's going on in Hollywood. It's 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 going on in every industry in a, in the United States where a lot of this you know um you know misogyny and um bullying goes on behind the scenes so I'm definitely you know asking that the most high looks after um Jaguar and that the truth be revealed you know and and the fact that um this is a time you know COVID for me, is a blessing and a curse. Mm. And the reason why I say that it's a blessing and a curse because the curse part of it is that a lot of people were badly affected, as I mentioned earlier. You know, a lot of deaths, a lot of people losing their jobs, a lot of people now in financial distress, a lot of people who have once had, you know, successful businesses are now having to shut their doors. But the blessing is that bullshit is being exposed. COVID doesn't care about how much money you have. Or your status in the industry. COVID has completely opened the floodgates. To bullshit being exposed. And people seeing the truth. To you know to what you are. So if you're a person who's hiding behind a bunch of bullshit. And hiding, a bu hiding behind a fake image. People are, are being. Are being the things that's going on in the dark. Is now being brought to the light. And. You know, that's where 2000, that where this whole 2020 COVID situation is a blessing because COVID is exposing a lot of bullshit. We're exposing a lot of, you know, individuals who, um, who were treacherous are now being seen for who they are. And, you know, the saying, if someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So COVID as a blessing is exposing a bunch of bullshit. It's exposing a lot of corruption. It's exposing a lot of things that people normally would sweep under the rug or not pay attention to. Now it's right there in your face. And we see this happening all the time. And <clears throat> definitely with like a lot of the scandals that have been exposed this year. I mean, COVID has no respect to person. You know, in this time, I think a lot is changing as far as the culture, um, as far as um, the way people, ha the way people out, you know, the way people have their outlook on life is changing. Because here it is, people, you know, 
We're all about just getting that nine to five, working and maintaining, but then that get ripped, that gets ripped away from you. So a lot of people are waking up to what's really going on, that nothing in this world is promised to you, and job security is not promised to anybody. So that's what I have, y'all. Get down in those comments and let me know your thoughts on these um, topics that I've mentioned. And, you know, give your thoughts about, you know, what's currently going on. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, everybody, take care.